Welcome to the Kingsford Fairview Flash. I'm Coach Van Dusen. This is Season 20, Episode 18, A Fliver Flashback. Sit down with Jack Zimmerman. So if you've been keeping up with the Kingsford Fliver Flash over the last few episodes, you'll know that in Episode 16 of Season 20, we sat down with Eric Johnson, who is an Air Force veteran uh, and also coaches youth football here at Kingsford. In Season... Correction, in episode 17, we sat down with Evan Phillips, who is a 2019 graduate and currently a Blackhawk mechanic at Fort Riley, Kansas. And this week, we get to sit down with Evan Phillips's teammate, Jack Zimmerman. Now, Jack left high school in 2019 as well, but he took a little bit different path, still in the military. He went to the United States Marine Corps, and he is currently stationed out in California as a mortarman with the Marines. So this has kind of been a, a neat little segue we've taken. We did youth coaches, and now we've moved into military members with uh, Eric, Evan, and now Jack. So let's get started. All right, thanks for coming on the show, Jack. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Um, so go ahead and just introduce yourself. Tell us uh, your connection to Fliver football and kind of what you're doing now. All right. Uh, well, I grew up in Kingston, Michigan. Grew up hunting, fishing like anyone else would. Uh, graduated in 2019. Had you as a coach. Had Coach Hofer, Navarra. Grew up playing football. And uh, football is one of the things that really got me ready for my future, whatever it would have been, even if I didn't you know, do what I'm doing. So, I mean, there's a lot of history behind it, a lot of hard work and motivation that molded me into a better person, helped me become stronger physically and mentally. And now, and you took that right right away and, and joined the Marines. I did. So, what's it your was, what's your current job now? What are you doing with the Marine Corps? I'm an 0341. I'm a mortarman, so I help out the 11s with indirect fire, uh, whether, you know, it be illumination, smoke. Uh, he high explosive rounds so it's a lot of a lot of like a lot of tedious little movements <laughs> right a lot of math i imagine a lot of math and i probably should have thought that one over before i uh, <laughs> chose that job but but uh yeah so it, as it's you, simple once again are you motorized or are you carrying this stuff on your back everywhere you go uh i'm with this line company so we use a 60 millimeter which is the smaller one so we carry everything unfortunately so whenever we do movements range movements or hikes we're carrying it but uh i'd rather be carrying that than the big one <laughs> right so when for those of you that who are listening who aren't really familiar i'm army and i kind of know how army mortarmen work um but marine corps mortarmen you travel with the infantry and then set up basically with the headquarters to provide indirect fire support is that is that correct we do so i know you guys use the 120s you have the 120s right uh we we have all of them we have 16 well i know you have all of them but yep. we we don't have the 120s anymore which was one thing our one of our instructors actually he's like if you guys ever attach the army when you're on deployment or something like that he's like if they give you a chance to use one of those he's like i would do it because those things are nice okay and, and like, like after i after i got to learn my job and like i used the first two i was like anything bigger that makes a bigger boom that's pretty cool <laughs> right and again for those of you listening when we talk about uh 60 81s 120s that's millimeters and how big the actual round is so a 60 millimeter round uh how heavy is is like a standard high explosive 60 millimeter round uh i think it's oh man put me on the spot <laughs> uh, i think rough, rough i think guess. it's i think it's like four four or five it, it varies so the you have like high explosive illumination and uh smoke and yep. illumination and smoke are bigger so those ones weigh more okay but so some can vary from like nine or well, that'd be more it, it could be like from six to eight pounds and then the he ones are probably like four to five but it, it can vary with different types of fuses and stuff so oh okay and that's and that's just one that's just one shot that's just one round. And that's just one round. So what what does a team consist of? Um, what is a motor team? Like how many how many people, who's in charge? What does that organization look like? So the each gun would have three people on it. You have a gunner and 
uh, a gunner and a uh, ammo man. So um, the gunner, the gunner is in charge. So we do a two thing called two man gunning, where you got two people on the gun, and then the ammo man is in back, obviously okay. prepping the rounds and handing them off once you're ready to fire. And uh, the gunner would put in the sight data, so you know there's the deflection, which left and right, and then the elevation, which you know whatever. Up and, and out. Uh, yeah. He would do, yep, up and out. And uh, he would do that and be charged of the elevation. And uh, the A gunner or squad leader would take the bipods and move them to wherever. And then he'd, it's hard to explain it. You know, if people are listening, they have no idea. But, uh, oh, right. No, I agree. <laughs> so, so, and then like, like on a, on a level, uh, like if you're, you know, woodworking or whatever, you got to get the bubble and the vial in the middle. So we got two of those for the elevation oh. and cross level. Okay. So there's a, there's a, a cross level bot or knob and a traverse and you're turning those and you're trying to get right up on the left side of your aiming stake and then you got to get the bubbles leveled in there every you know and you got like a time limit when we do gunners exams and stuff so that's right. how you, those two work on that and then obviously like whoever's in back saying you know fire at my command and then the ammo man will pass it off to the squad leader and he'll say half load you know put it in hold it fire and then you know you just go if it's fire for effect you know you just keep going at your pace so it's okay like that and there's for for those of you listening, um, it's I've been I've never been on that on the gun end, but I've been on the other end where you're calling for fire, and it's mm -hmm. a it's a pretty complex process, where I'm you know if I'm on the ground and I want to put rounds on enemy troops, I have to give the guns direction, and then when you fire the first one, then then we adjust fire. Yep. You know, so if, if it's off to the left, I might say right 400, meaning go to the right 400 meters. Exactly. Hopefully hit on the other side and then left 200. And then once we're on it, you know, then it's fire for effect, which you're talking and you just start dropping just rounds. Drop. <laughs> right. I and mean, that's got to awesome be, feeling. that's got to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. And like you, uh, I remember our first time um, going to a range in School of Infantry at ITB and, uh, everyone's just like all ready and hyped up and everything and then it's like you get handed a literal bomb in your hands and you're just holding it like whoa <laughs> right i remember that then, feeling uh, when i got a yeah. the first grenade i ever held yeah it's like we've thrown hundreds of practice grenades but this is blue bodies this is real yeah i know that's what uh actually our, our second week of itv we went up they brought us to a grenade range and we were just throwing those blue bodies you know practicing different ways on your stomach rolling and then turning over and then they brought us up in this like it had like so shrapnel couldn't you know whatever and we're yeah, all bunker. waiting in line yep and like you just hear the boom and then you could feel the shrapnel come on top of you and i was just like whoa I'm like this is real like we haven't you know we boot camp you shoot the m4 but like these are grenades and then we got to watch one explode. And when I when I got mine, I was just handed, sitting there. And I was just like, all right, I got everything right. And I threw it. And my instructor, he grabbed me, he goes, get down. And he, like, threw me to the ground. And I was like, I wanted to watch it. Like, that's dope. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And but I it would have been very bad. <laughs> and I don't know how to describe to anybody who's never been around them how loud they are. They're just so, so incredibly, so like, you hear it, you feel it in your chest. Just, wow. <laughs> that's, so, yeah yeah exactly but uh tell us uh tell us what you this is a flivver flashback so tell us a little bit about your football playing days at kingsford when you started what positions you played who you played oh, for man. uh all right so i remember it was the end of fourth grade oh that's awesome i hadn't thought about this in a while the end of fourth grade we uh had a couple of days left in school and we got pamphlets for pop warner and okay. like me and my buddies, you know, Noah, me, Noah, and Nate, and everyone were just like, we, you know, recessed since like kindergarten. We're just playing football all the time. And, you know, finally we can actually like play. And uh, so that summer came around going into fifth grade. And I think every year is like my team was always sponsored by Econo. And uh, I had different coaches like Omen, uh, Mr. Harry, you know, I had Murdoch, you know, we had all these coaches. And uh, it was, it was pretty cool because like moving up, through Pop Warner and then once we hit high school it's like the coaches went with us so you know aside from having them as teachers like the bond and everything they taught us just transitioned into high school and I think that was one thing that was like pretty awesome and like helped a lot is because you already have this bond with you know your brothers your friends and then the coaches 
And it's like, it made football just one of the greatest things. I'd suffer through a day of school just to go to practice. <laughs> right. And just blow off some steam. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the things, the way we've kind of structured practice now that Coach Navarro has taken over is all coaches are coaching everybody. You know, we practice together. So all of the guards might come with me, you know, 9, 10, 11, and 12th grade guards. And all the oh, really? receivers might go to Coach Olson. So we're starting that bond right away in ninth grade. So by the time you're a senior, you've had, you know, if you're a quarterback, you've had Coach Navarro for four years already. Um, so we're kind of, we're trying to do that at the high school level, which you're talking about. So yeah, what, that's smart. Yeah. What, what positions did you play? And uh, did, you, so I was, did you change? I didn't actually, I was uh, always, always like corner or safety. I, I don't know why, but I mean, I, I just came to love that position. Um, there were, there were times like, I think when we got to about sophomore year, they would have me basically I remember specifically Menominee game uh coach Murdoch and uh coach Olson coach, coach Olson yeah it's coach Olson yeah uh, <laughs> they're like all right so basically what you're gonna do is he's like you're gonna go right next to the line like a DN and you're just gonna go up and you're just gonna take out the lead blockers and I was like all right cool I'm just gonna put my head wherever <laughs> just try to take some people out but uh, aside from that, it was basically always corner and safety. And then once we hit, like, varsity, I loved playing that, like, flat and force safety position that me and Bo had. And, like, I watched Preston and then everyone, you know, play. I, that was such a cool position because, I mean, you can you have run support first, which I always like, you know, being in the back, like, coming up and just trying to hit someone. But you can also, you know, drop back and everything. Right. That was always cool. Very cool. And then um, so – on the football theme, go ahead and tell us a uh, one of your favorite memories or one of your favorite parts about playing high school football. Uh, all right. So aside aside from really like, you know, you're going out there and it, there's a lot of like emotion and everything with your you know pals that you grew up with and everything. I think one of the best memories was my um, my junior year when we made it to the playoffs and like just the atmosphere in the locker room, with, you know, the people, like the seniors that year and everything. And they, every, like, we're just like, this could be it. This could be, you know, we can go down state. And then we won that first playoff game against Gladstone and it just like kept growing. And it was crazy. Cause like, uh, you know, you go to practice, you goof around a lot, whatever. But like at that time it was like, after we made it to the playoffs, the mood just switched. There was less joking around and more like everyone was insanely serious. And it was weird. It wasn't weird, but it was like cool to be a part of like the mood just switching. And everything was just like, wow, like we can actually, you know, take this farther than we think. And then we won that first playoff game and it was like, all right, this, this is definitely going to be it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, think that was probably my favorite memory. And I think, um, you know, you might, you might find a similar attitude shift in the Marines from your everyday work to getting ready for deployment. You know, when people realize, uh, hey, this is for real, and especially if you have some guys who have already deployed, uh, uh, helping with the, younger, with the younger soldiers. So, Yeah, we definitely um, – I see that a lot. So the last one they went on was a Mew, which people are like, uh, is that really – you know, whatever. But – uh on a ship obviously you know but uh when we got here it's like they still to this day ask us like do you guys know where we're going do you know how serious this is yeah. you know so there's times like on the weekends or like when we're not doing anything really during the work day you know we have some downtime it's like they'll joke around and everything but when it comes like when we do gun drills it's or we're out patrolling doing stuff that the 11s the riflemen do it's like you zeroed in focus you know, you're making sure, you know, all the hand arm signals, you're just doing everything. So it, it is like that. It is like, you know, you can have your phone, but when it comes, because this is like, I mean, football is great, but like, this is more of a, like, this is serious, serious, like real life type thing. So right. it's like, you really got to be like on your stuff and know everything. Right. And I remember when we were getting ready to deploy to Iraq, uh, 
none of us had, had deployed before, so we didn't really know what to expect. So we were doing everything the best we knew how. But then when I was getting ready to deploy to Afghanistan, I had a bunch of people that had already deployed once before. So when we're talking about medevac drills or close co quarters combat drills and those types of things, I had, a, I had a core group of people that knew how serious it was and could bring mm -hmm. along the, the soldiers who had never deployed before to kind of like what you're saying and saying, this is, this is insanely serious. Like if you pay attention to one thing today, this has got to be it. This might save yeah. your life or the life of your buddy. Yeah, that's why, I mean, like in high school, I'll admit I wasn't a great student. You know, I just kind of like, uh, get it done, whatever. So like after boot camp, then after going through the additional like, job training and everything, it's like when, when I hit here, I, I had a better mindset of like, okay, like these guys, you know, we're, we're around the same age, but like they've already gone on a deployment and uh, they know what they're talking about. I need to write down, like I have a little, you know, write in the rain, like one of them little, yep. Yep. Smart yeah, I have one of those. Yep. I just write down everything, you know, that they say, even if it like doesn't correlate, I'm just like writing everything down. And I'm, when I have downtime during the work day, I just study it because like I, I need to know my stuff. And I mean, we're still about a year out, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying to just make sure I am on top of my game. <laughs> right. No, and that'll, and that'll serve you well as you go, you know, whether you decide to just do one enlistment or, or keep doing it for 20, um, you know, education never goes away and that can be education from your buddies or it can be if the Marines decide to send you to a three day course. I was kind of talking about this with uh, our last guest, Evan Phillips, uh, who's a army Black Hawk mechanic. So if you're watching this episode, you can go back and, and check out the one with Evan, but just about the education will never go away and you never know what you're going to get. Even if you go to a three day hazmat course, you might meet some people there who later down the line, you're like, Hey, we went to the same school together yeah. and, you know, kind of help each other out. So with that fun kind of theme, tell us something funny that happened either at practice or at a game. Uh, I know we, we've, we've heard everything from puking to, you know, you name it. And I've heard the stories, not all of them are appropriate for, uh, for the yeah, podcast, yes, but, um, <laughs> but tell us something funny that happened while you're playing high school football. All right. Well, uh, so me, me and Nate, Nate Rudder, we were primarily defense, but I mean, like, because our senior year, we had Tyler and Hunter for split end positions, but like, we still, you know, knew them all the routes and everything. So, uh, after every game, Coach Navarro and Coach Hope would be like, like, why aren't you guys standing by us on offense? You know, we could throw you in there and, you know, you get a pass or two or something. And we're like, all right, we will. And so after every game, we're standing there, you know, we go to practice. And then they're like, why weren't you by us? And we're like, we were. We were standing right there. <laughs> and uh, one time, I forgot what game it was, but uh, Hope, uh, Hope and Navarro were like, okay, we're going to put you guys in. Make sure you're right next to us. So that game came up. Me and Nate standing right there. Tyler was just gassed because that kid was just working. He was tired, and he came out. And Hunter, I think Hunter might have hurt, got hurt or something. I'm not sure. So Bo is standing next to us just about dying. Me and Nate are standing there fresh, fine, ready to go in. Hope turns around. He goes, I need a split. And he looks. He looks at me and Nate. We're both standing there like, we're ready you know, to go. Up like we're good and then he looked at us and he looks at Bo over there bent over he goes Bo get in there and me and Nate <laughs> are like fine we're done we're done trying and and then even after that the practice the first practice after that game he goes well, where were you guys and I'm like you look right at us <laughs> I'm like we're standing right there we were ready uh, that's funny and you know that's it's weird stuff that happens um you know being a player and now a coach I, I'm sure I've done the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> why, why weren't you playing in the game? You know, but, um, so to finish this off, uh, I always like to ask, uh, people who have played and they're off kind of living life now. Um, you know, off in the Marines out in California, which mm -hmm. is, which is pretty cool preparing to do some pretty heavy duty stuff. What's some yeah. advice you would have for the, the players coming through football now, either the seniors getting ready to start their last year which have been a little bit Shanghai due to this uh, coronavirus. I haven't been able to get in the weight room for a while. Or maybe uh, the eighth graders. I have a bunch of eighth graders that are really excited, um, or ninth graders now, 
to start their career playing freshman football. So what's some advice you would give to those that are either just starting or maybe getting ready to just end their Fliver football career? Uh, for the ones that are about to end, that are going in their senior year, uh, enjoy every moment of it. Uh, I, this can even go for the kids that are starting high school. Don't take it for granted. Uh, I definitely did. I, I would, uh, I'd do anything to go back, you know, just to even have a practice again. It, it's actually an unreal feeling that you won't understand until, you know, your last game or anything like that. I remember when I was getting my uh, senior pictures done, the guy that was taking my pictures, he goes, all right, he's like, start walking across, because we were at Flipper Field, he goes, start walking across and look back at it. You know, look back at the camera. And I was like, okay. So I did that and he took it and he showed me, he goes, I'm calling it right now. He goes, your last game, you're gonna, you're gonna think about this picture and you're going to cry. And I was like, you're stupid. No, I'm not. <laughs> but uh, that Escanaba game came around, and I was like, I remember I was, I was just hugging it out with Trev, and I was like, thought about the picture, and I was like, and I just, I got mad. I was like, of course. Of course he called it. Right. I was like, there's, after playing this game for, you know, seven, eight years, you know, with the dudes you grew up with, your best friends, it's just like, don't take it for granted. It went by so fast. And it's it's something that like uh, you're gonna you're gonna definitely miss no matter what you do even even if you go play college ball you're gonna look back at the high school years and you're gonna be like wow like that was pretty awesome and also like uh, don't like mess around in school don't be stupid or do anything to like take a, take away your time playing I've seen it happen to my buddies and it's just not a good idea focus in school you know get smarter because it definitely helps in the field. I mean, you know, down from, like, remembering steps, remembering your plays, you know. The more knowledge, the better, which was something I wish I took advantage of, but, again, didn't. So those are those are some big things that I would tell them and yeah. just enjoy every minute. And I think people who come to Kingsford, they have I – did, I didn't know until I left, but we have such an incredible environment <clears throat> to play in. You know, we have sure. some amazing fans. Our band is, I always say it's the best in the state of Michigan. You know, and like the light show, they have better fireworks than some towns do for the 4th <laughs> of July. Uh, and uh, just everybody's in maize and blue from the, from the kindergartners all the way up to, you know, the 80-year-old man who, who's never missed a game since, since 1950 or whatever. And uh, it's just, it's such an incredible place to be a part of either as a player, as a coach, as a fan. And uh, that's, that's some really great advice. It's a, it's a crazy pride thing that Kingsford has. Like I, I didn't realize that like, you know, we're small town and everything. And I always knew that growing up, like everyone knows everyone, but like specifically like football here is just like, wow. You know, like you said, from the little kids to, you know, we have the seniors coming in that never missed the game. It's awesome. It is. It really is. So, well, I'll let you get back to being a Marine. <laughs> and uh, <All> right. <laughs> I want to say uh, thanks for coming on, and we wish you all the best as you go on to do great things. All right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. That was United States Marine Corps Private First Class Jack Zimmerman, and we'd like to thank you for your service, Jack, and wish you all the best as you move forward in your career with the United States Marine Corps. And that will do it for this episode. We ask that you go down in the show notes or down in the video notes if you're watching on YouTube and hit the subscribe button and share with your friends so that everybody can learn about the Kingsford Flipper football program and all the people that are associated with it. It's been pretty great. So give us a like, a subscribe, a retweet, all the things that are good. Till next time, I'm Coach Van Dusen. Invest in tomorrow by owning today.